enjoyable candy bars present... Curtain Sky! of the big new Mars bar welcome you to Curtain Time. It's the beginning of the holiday weekend and a festive crowd fills the lobby. And here, looking unusually happy tonight, is the man about town, your host, Patrick Allen. Good evening. Well, I suppose you know, Myron, that with tonight's performance, Curtain Time begins its fourth year on the air. I do, Mr. Allen. How are we going to celebrate? With a sparkling comedy romance. But there's the overture... We'd better hurry inside the theater for tonight's production. Now, curtain time. Tickets, please. Thank you, sir. Seventh row center. Feet seven and eight. Thank you. Well, the lights will be dimmed in a moment, but we still have time to glance at the program. Harry Elders, supported by the Curtain Time players, is starred tonight in The Worm Turn by Joseph P. Fox. Mr. Elders will be heard as Steve Donovan. And with Nanette Sargent on vacation, Loretta Poynton is featured in the role of... Well, you'll find out. Curtain Time! There's the call for the first act of The Worm Turn. Well, the scene is the office of Alfred Avery, editor and publisher of Manhattan, the well-known magazine. With him at the moment is one of his top writers, Steve Donovan. Steve, the last article you wrote for Manhattan isn't worth sour apples. I know, Mr. Avery. I'm sorry, but I've got to reject it. I'm not surprised. What's the matter? Have you lost the old Steve Donovan touch? I've hit a slump, Mr. Avery. I guess it happens to all writers once in a while. Well, maybe so. But, Steve, I've got a proposition to make to you. Okay. How would you like to dig one? Look, Mr. Avery, I'm in no mood for gag. But I'm serious. And I don't get it. Now, here, I want to show you something. I want you to see what I've got in this container. I'll take the cover off. Why, why they're worms. Live worms. Yes. Aren't they beauties? Oh, they're positively glamorous. But uh, put the cover back on. Looking at those things squirming in there gives me the jim jam. Okay. But you know, Steve, there's a story in these sandworms. Oh, sure. Boy worm meets girl worm. Mr. Avery, you've been working too hard. I know it. You better... Take a rest and relax. I'm going to, Steve. I'm starting on a fishing trip this afternoon. That's why I bought these worms. They cost me five dollars. Five dollars? Yes, sir. A dollar a dozen. A dollar a dozen for those slimy things? That's right. But sea bass goes for these worms the way a trout goes for flies. And you really want me to dig worms for you? Gee, I didn't figure I'd slip that much. No, 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 Steve. I want you to dig up a story about them. About worms? Yes. Besides, it'll do you good to get away from the city. It'll give you a fresh approach in your writing. Oh. Well, uh, where do they dig those things? In Jonesville, Maine. They dig them on the flats at low tide. Mm -hmm. Then they fly them up here to New York. Uh, it's quite an industry. And who, may I ask, is the genius behind this enterprising enterprise? And the company's called Jerry Jones Incorporated. And they're doing a land office business. And you think there's a story in these ones? I do. How they dig them, how they market them, and so forth. Uh, and I think it's right down your alley. Well, what can I lose? Right now, I feel about as low as a worm. Oh, now, my boy. Okay, Mr. Avery, a worming, I will go. Good. And Steve. Yes? Those people up in Maine are pretty rugged individualists. Yes, so I've heard. They don't like people prying into their business. So you'd better not let them know you're a writer. Mm -hmm. Think up some idea that won't get them suspicious of you. Oh, that's simple. It is? Sure, I'll put on some old clothes and get a job up there in Jonesville. Well, yes, but what will you do? Well, what do you expect? I'll dig worms. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, miss. Yes? What is it? Why, uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones? Yes, I thought he might give me a job digging worms. Oh. Well, have you ever dug them before? Have I ever dug worms? Why, when I was a kid, I was the champion worm digger of the whole county. Oh. Let me see your hand. Uh, what? I said let me see. Oh, all right, here. Hmm. It's easy to see you haven't dug any worms lately. Okay, so I haven't any calluses. 
But if you'll tell me where to find Mr. Jones, we can dispense with a palm reading. You're rather sure of yourself, aren't you? Look, miss, I'm not interested in your observations. I'm looking for a job, and I'd like to see Mr. Jones, if you don't mind. Well, it happens there is no Mr. Jones. Uh, but that sign over the door says Jerry Jones, Incorporated. I know it. And I'm Jerry Jones. Jerry's short for Jerry. Oh. Then, then you're... Uh, that's right. I'm the boss lady. Look, I came in here for a job, but... Uh, well, it's been nice knowing you, Miss Jones. Well, now, wait. Don't go. I, I think I can give you a job if you think you're equal to it. I'm equal to anything. Well, you might change your mind after the first day. Change my mind? Why? Well, because digging sandworms is your... Uh, my name's Steve Donovan. Well, digging in the mud for the product I sell is rugged, back-breaking work, Mr. Donovan. You don't think I can take it? Hmm? That remains to be seen. But I don't pay by the hour or the day or the week. I just pay for what my diggers bring in. Three cents a worm. Oh. Oh. Good digger, of course, can make as much as $12 a day. If that's agreeable to you now, you can start work immediately. Oh, oh sure. It's perfectly agreeable. Oh, good. Then I'll have Malachi, uh, that's my foreman, Malachi Chicken, supply you with the tools of the trade. What are they? A fork, a pail, and hip boots. Malachi! Coming, Miss Jerry, right away! Malachi, this is Steve Donovan. Hello. Mr. Donovan's going to work for me. <laughs> If you haven't had any experience, so you'd better take him out in the flats and show him how it's done. Okay, young fella, follow me. All right with you. Thank you, Miss Jones. I'm sure you'll find my work satisfactory. Well, time will tell, Miss Donovan, after you've served your apprenticeship. Well, all I can say is that I've had a lot of jobs in my life, but this is the first time I've ever been an apprentice worm digger. Well, Malachi. Howdy, Miss Jerry. Well, I was just about to close up the office. I heard that new man Mr. Donovan make out today. Well, he's improving. He dug 60 of them today. Mm, even so, his week's work is next to only $9.60. Yep. And uh, he spent a good deal of that for liniment. <laughs> All the time he's digging out there, he keeps buttering all oh, my aching back. You got to give him credit, though. He sticks to it. You know, I can't understand it. I thought he'd quit after the first day. Well, he's plump tuckered out at the end of the day. Just goes to show you digging worms is no job for a feller from New York City. Oh, well, how do you know he's from New York City? Well, uh, Andy Pringle over at the post office gave me this letter to give him. It was left at uh, General Delivery. Oh. See, here's the postmark here, man. Oh. It says uh, New York City, and up here in the corner there, the return address says Alfred Avery Publisher, uh, Manhattan Magazine. Yes, sir. Let's see. And I think... Malachi. Yes, Miss Jerry? Hand me those magazines on the table there. Well, sure, sure, sure. Here you are. What are you in such a fuss for? You're going through those magazines like your life depended on it. I'm happy, Mr. Jerry. That's my fish. What are you looking for? So. Well, so what? Look here, Malachi. This magazine article. Here. This town called Radio City by Steve Dunham. Say, you think... It's... I don't think, Malachi. I know... Our Steve Donovan with the aching back is the same Steve Donovan who wrote this article. By gum, I bet you're right. Oh, he probably thinks people up here in Jonesville never heard of Manhattan Magazine. Probably thinks we can't even read. Yeah, but what's he doing here digging worms for us? Seems like this magazine would pay him more than $9.60 a week. Malachi, I want you to keep this a secret. A secret? Yes. I don't want Mr. Donovan to know that we know he's up here prying into our business. Miss Jerry, I'll stay mum as a clam. So that's his game. Seems so. Well, Malachi, too, can play at that game. And when I get through with Mr. Steve Donovan, he'll wish he'd never seen a worm. The worm. The Golden Falls on the first act. My Golden Golden Play, starring Harry Elders and featuring Loretta Boynton. Brought to you by the makers of the big new Mars Bar. In order to get a story for a magazine, Steve Donovan took a job digging worms in Maine. But he didn't tell his employer, Jerry Jones, who he was. She, however, has found out and resents what she considers Steve's superior attitude. Well, it's now, some days later, Steve is out in the flat digging away in the mud. Oh, worms. Worms. How did I ever get into this anyway? 
see you like to talk to yourself while you're digging, Mr. Donovan. What? Oh, it's you, Miss Jones. How are you getting along this morning? Well, to tell you the truth, the worm and I don't see eye to eye. I've only dug a couple dozen so far today. Here, let me take your fork. It's a pleasure. Here you are. Now watch me. Hmm, this looks like a good spot. Mm-hmm. There we are. Now let's pick them up. Go ahead. It's your idea. Two, three, five, eight. All of them just where I dug. What's your harm over the worm, Miss Jones? You haven't been digging deep enough, Mr. Donovan. You know, I think you're getting tired of the job. Oh, you do? Well, for your information, I'm not. And if digging deeper is the secret of success, I'll dig all the way to China. Say, how come you got into this business anyway? Hmm, pays me a good living, Mr. Donovan. There's money in this mud. Yeah, a lot of backaches. Well, of course, there is an easier way of getting these worms. There is? How? Sniping for them at night. Look, Miss Jones, that snipe hunting gag at night went out with button shoes. I'm not falling for that one. Oh, it's no gag, Mr. Donovan. Any of the natives around here will tell you that on dark, damp nights, especially when there's fog, sandworms appear on the surface of the flats at low tide. What do they do? Play ring around the rosy? Very well, don't... You won't be serious. There's no use trying to help you. I'm sorry. Go on. Tell me about it. Well, a uh, night sniper has to just sneak up on the worm unawares and grab him before he gets back in the mud. Mm-hmm. That's why he's called a sniper. Oh, he sort of stalks his game, huh? All right. Make fun. But a good night sniper can get as many as a thousand worms. And I've seen it done. You have? Well, then suppose you show me how this uh, night sniping is done. Well, I'd be glad to. Mm-hmm. According to the weather report, tonight will be perfect for sniping. Oh. So if you'll meet me at my office at 8 o'clock... Look, look, I've got a better idea. You have? How about having dinner with me first? Then we'll go out sniping. Well, uh... Come on, huh? I'd like to get to know you better, little boss. What do you say? You weren't kidding about night sniping, Miss Jones. My pail is almost full. Well, I think we'd better quit, Mr. Donovan. The fog's getting thicker. Oh, not now. I'm enjoying this. These headlamps we're wearing are quite an idea. Really? Uh Uh-huh. If anyone told me a week ago I'd get a kick out of catching worms, I'd have told them they were nuts. (laughs) Well, to be perfectly frank with you, Mr. Donovan, you didn't strike me as the ideal man for the job. I didn't? No. Um, you appear to be more the, um... The intellectual type. Me? Intellectual? <laughs> Folks be silly. All my life I've been a horny handed son of the soil. Oh, brother. Did you say something? No. I just caught another worm. A big one. Oh. Well, I caught one, too. And just in time, the water down there covered it up. I know. The tide's coming in fast. Now we better get off the flat. I'll go on ahead and you take the pail. Okay, boss. You know, I owe you an apology. This sniping was the real McCoy. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Uh, hey, boss, did you hear what I said? Oh, Miss Jones. Miss Jones, where are you? Jerry. Jerry, can you hear me? Jerry, I can't see a thing in this fog, and the water's getting deeper. Jerry, say something. I can't even see your light. Gee, I wonder. Something's happened to her. Maybe there's quicksand around here. Maybe she... Oh, no. Jerry. Jerry, where are you? All right, Malachi, you may as well take the boat out and bring in our panic-stricken Mr. Donovan. Okay, Miss Jerry. He's about yelled himself hoarse this past half hour. I'll fetch him. <laughs> He doesn't know the tide only rises three feet on these flats, and that he's only 30 yards from shore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been watching his headlamp through the fog. All he's been doing is walking around in circles. Well, here I go to the rescue. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't forget what I told you. I want him to think that I'm still missing. I won't forget. Mr. Donovan should really have something to write about when this night's over. <laughs> This is the wisest thing to do, Mr. 
Mr. Donovan. Are you sure, Malachi? Yep. No use rowing around out here any longer looking for Miss Jerry. You'll beast the boat here and I'll go get help. I'll go with you. Oh, no, no, no. You better put on some dry clothes first. You can meet me back at the town dock. All right, Malachi. But hurry. I will. I'll be waiting for you at the dock. <laughs> Devil's Malachi, why doesn't he get here? Oh, is that you, Malachi? No, it ain't. Uh, who is it then? I'm the town constable. I was just making my rounds. I happened to see you sitting on the dock. Oh, well, uh, the uh, folks around here don't just sit in the town dock at three o'clock in the morning muttering to themselves. Well, you see, I am. Oh. You're the new worm digger, ain't you? Never mind who I am. We've got to get help. Help? Who for? Oh, Jerry Jones. I lost her out there on the flats in the fog. He did? Yes. Well, she didn't look lost five minutes ago. What do you mean? Well, she and the foreman Malachi Chicken were paying off the night snipers when I looked into her office. She and Malachi were... I didn't go in, but from the outside, it looked like Miss Jerry and Malachi and all the diggers were having a big laugh over something. Oh, they were, were they? Yep. So this was a put-up job. I thought Malachi wasn't too anxious about finding her out there. Oh, boy, what a sap I've been. Well, I don't know what you're raving about, young fella, but you better go home and get some sleep. You look like you had a hard night. Hard night is right, Constable. But come the dawn, somebody's going to pay for this hard night, or I'm the wormiest worm of them all. You'd be out of breath, too, if you just saw what I saw. Well, what's wrong? Well, that's that Steve Donovan. He's out on the flats with a bulldozer. A bulldozer? Yep, he's plowing up acres of our mud flats. He's plowing up? Yes, ma'am, and he's hiring a crew of fellas from Portland. They're picking up worms by the thousands. But he can't do that. Well, maybe not, but he is. Oh, good heavens, I... I asked him what he thought he was doing, Miss Jerry. Yes? Well, he just looked at me funny like and said, I've gone into business for myself. The easy way. Oh, Malachi will be ruined when he gets through... Dear, there won't be a worm left in Jonesville. went to Maine to dig worms to get material for a magazine article. But it turned out to be hard work. And there was also a complication with Miss Jerry Jones, head of the local worm digging outfit. But much to Jerry's consternation, Steve figured out a way to dig worms with a plow and a bulldozer. And Miss Jones faces an insecure business future. Well, now, a few days later, Steve enters Jerry's office. Ah, good morning, Miss Jones. <clears throat> How's my competitor in the worm business this fine day? Well, if it isn't Bigger Donovan, the worm tycoon. Or should I say the tycoon worm? Ah. Well, I just thought I'd pay you a friendly visit to tell you I made close to $900 with my bulldozer the last few days. 900 Yep, there's money in the mud, Miss Jones. That's quite true. But there won't be for long. No? What do you mean? If I were you, Mr. Donovan, I'd go back to your magazine in New York before you sink in any deeper. Oh, so you know about that. Yes, I've known about it for quite some time. And that's why you had me playing Robinson Crusoe out there on the flats that night you took me sniping. Hmm. Well, you'll be playing more than Robinson Crusoe if you don't leave here. Me leave here after striking this gold mine? Yes. <laughs> no, Miss Jones, I'm a permanent fixture here now. In fact, I'm here to make you a proposition. Oh, a proposition? Mm-hmm. How would you and your men like to work for me? Why, you... Why not? I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Mr. Donovan, I'll give you just ten seconds to get out of my office. If you don't... I'll... Okay, okay, put down that digging fork. I'm going. Good. But, Miss Jones, that fork you're threatening me with is as outmoded as the dodo bird. Is that so? It is. When it comes to worm digging, the bulldozer is here to stay. <laughs> All right, you there, Mr. Donovan. Stop that bulldozer. Oh, hello, Constable. What can I do for you? 
You can get down off that contraption. That's what you can do. All right. What's up? Come along with me. You'll find out. Oh, now, see here, Constable. No, you come along quiet like... Oh, okay, where to? To the town lockup. I got a warrant for your arrest. A warrant from... For what for? For destroying the natural resources of the town of Jonesville and digging worms without a license. You mean I have to have a license to dig worms? That's ridiculous. Clam up, mister. Now, you see here. You'll get your chance to say your piece tomorrow morning in front of the judge. Meanwhile, you're spending the night under lock and key. Somebody let me out of this cell. I've got constitutional rights. Constable! Constable, come here and let me out. I want to call my lawyer. Uh, you better come. Of all the outrages... Why, I... you are in a dinner, Mr. Donovan. Oh, it's you. Where's the constable? He's gone home for supper, but I thought I'd drop by and see how you're getting along. Jerry Jones, you're behind this. Uh, yes, Mr. Donovan, you so happens I am. Well, you won't get away with it. I know my rights. I'll take this to the Supreme Court. Now, that's your privilege as a citizen, of course, but first you'll uh, have to have it tried in the Jonesville Court. Well, just the same. Uh, Mr. Donovan, I've got a big surprise for you. What? My foreman, Malachi Chickering, is judge of the Jonesville Court. Malachi Chickering is... Good night, Mr. Donovan, and pleasant dreams. I'll uh, see you tomorrow in court. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The court of the town of Jonesville County in Wisconsin is now in session. The defendant, Mr. Steve Donovan, will step to the bar. What for? This is a cut-and-dried case, and I'm about to be cut up in little pieces. The defendant will show proper respect for the court, or else... Yes, Your Honor. Steve Donovan, you were charged by Miss Jerry Jones, a resident of Jonesville, with deliberately attempting to destroy the livelihood of the citizens of this town. Is that your charge, Miss Jones? Not only that, Your Honor, but I also accuse him of coming here to Jonesville under false pretenses and of operating a business without a license. Well, what's the defendant got to say? Guilty or not guilty? Wait a minute. Don't I even get a chance to present my side of the story? <laughs> I know your side of the story. Oh, Jonesville justice, huh? And you let me tell you, Malachi Chickering. The defendant will address the court properly. Okay, Your Honor. If you think for one moment I'm going to let you and this... this worm-digging Porsche railroad... Your Honor, it appears to me that the defendant is threatening the court. Here's that way to me, too. Well, let me force charges. Guilty or not guilty? Please! Let me say something. You said too much already. Now, well, the best thing for you to do is plead guilty and take your medicine. Well, the least I'd get from this court is life. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Jones? I'm willing to drop the charges against the defendant on one condition. <laughs> I'll bet this is good. What's the condition, Miss Jones? That Mr. Donovan promises to leave Jonesville and stop prying into our business. Well, it's against my better judgment, but... This uh, is blackmail. Plain, unadulterated blackmail. Well, Mr. Donovan, what's your decision? Yeah, what's your decision? Oh, so, all right. I'll go. I'll go quietly. Case dismissed and court adjourned. Hey, young fella, there's a train leaving Jonesville for New York in 30 minutes. If I was you... I'll I'd... be on that train, Your Honor. But after I've gone, Miss Jones, I'd suggest you drop in at the Jonesville National Bank. Oh? Why? Just ask the cashier about a little transaction I made. I think it'll interest you. Now I've just about time to catch my train. Goodbye, you salty characters. Steve, wait, wait. Don't get on the train yet. Oh, so it's you, Miss Jones. Oh, Steve. Steve, why did you do it? I beg your pardon? Why did I do what? I... I just came from the bank. Why did you put the money you made with the bulldozer into my account? Oh, that. Well, I was up here for a story, not to take away your livelihood. Well, it's been nice knowing you, Miss Jones. My train's ready to pull out. Oh, Steve, I... Well, ah. Uh... Yes? Oh, Steve, I've misjudged you. Oh? The least I can do is show you my appreciation for what you did. Well, I... How? I... I... Like to... Jerry, kissing me was the nicest possible way of showing your appreciation. Oh, Steve, Steve, listen, isn't that your train? It's leaving. It is? Well, I'm not. 
After all, I've got to stay now and show you. Show me what? Why, show you how much I appreciate your appreciation. What do you say, darling? Shall we appreciate each other again? Oh, Steve. Oh, dearie, dearie, darling. The worm has turned. Oh, Miss Gary! Miss Gary, I got something to... to... Oh, well, skip it. Yes, Malachi? You wanted something? Well, it ain't important now. But, Steve... What? Looks like you'll have to appear before me again. Oh, no, what have I done now? Well, ain't nothing. But you see, you... I'm also justice of the peace here in Jonesville. You are? Yep. And from where I'm standing, <laughs> it appears to me like you and Miss Jerry are going to be needing a justice of the peace mighty soon. The curtain falls on the loud side. Another curtain time play. Brought to you by the makers of the big new Featured Loretta Point. The supporting players were Arthur Peterson and George Caesar. The curtain time music is arranged and conducted by Bert Farber, and the entire production is directed by Harry Holcomb. Next Saturday, Curtain Time will present a comedy romance entitled The Dishonest Ghost. And now I'll join this gay theater crowd as it leaves the merchandise mart. Many on their way to the exciting after theater spot here in Chicago. Until next week, then, this is Patrick Allen reminding you of your date every Saturday, same time, same station, when the makers of the big new Mars Bar present... Curtain Time! Monday night, be sure to hear Dr. I.Q., the Metal Banker, and next Saturday, be with us again for Curtain Time. Remember, for the finest quality candy bar of them all, just try a Mars bar.